Responsibility in Leadership and Expectations The ongoing 77th United Nations General Assembly themed a watershed moment, a transformative solution to interlocking challenges, stems from the recognition that the world is at a critical moment due to complex and interconnected crises, including the COVID-19 pandemic, the Russia-Ukraine war, humanitarian challenges, natural disasters of unprecedented nature, and growing concerns about threats to the global economy. It is therefore important that every nation, including our dear Africa and our country, Nigeria, should focus on contributing to joint solution to this crisis for a more sustainable and resilient future. Poor leadership, depleting economy, and insecurity across Africa cannot be continually blamed on colonization, as observed from the rather insensitive thrust in public commentary during the passing of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Post-colonial Africa has been nothing short of a failed system that has so slowly been constructed to function as a bling game. Majority of the countries in the world, like Singapore, were conquered and colonized, but despite this, they were able to rebuild their systems and rose to a place of global relevance with great economic power, which gives a clear example of responsible leadership and expectations. Nigeria and many other countries in Africa cannot continue dwelling in the shadows of the past. Our leaders are saddled with the responsibility of managing and grooming our resources, nurturing it to the point of becoming a dependable asset for advancement of the global economy through cultivating a good ecosystem for balanced leadership and progressive policies. Since we are faced with interlocking challenges, the world needs our input to salvage global crises, and we can only do so by, firstly, addressing our own problems, ranging from our educational institutions in Plinton, listening to ASU, revamping our health care, boosting our security, and creating policies that support businesses, especially SMEs, and fighting corruption. Raising our stakes in plain international politics or diplomatic affairs by being willing to channel our homegrown or developed resources or solutions in tackling global crises. Being intentional and mindful about our images as a nation. Just imagine taking a court clash from Nigeria to another country, the United Arab Emirates, instead of joining other great Nigerians in solving issues of global concern and shining our light as Nigerians and Africans. Let's, as we conclude, let us ponder on these words of the late Her Majesty Elizabeth II, by the grace of God of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland and of its other realms and territories, Queen, Head of the Commonwealth, Defender of the Faith, from 1952 to 2022. When life seems hard, the courageous do not lie down and accept defeat. Instead, they are all the more determined to struggle for a better future. This simply means that the buck stops at our tables. My fellow Nigerians and dear Africans, be responsible and effectively lead transformative solutions to these interlocking global challenges. <laughs> I want to start with this, a, lot, a lot to unpack. Yes. A lot to unpack. First of all, I, I don't think that we can brush aside um, the the how do you say the problem that colonialism brought to us? Okay. Mm. Look at it. It was in the last um, century in the 19th, it was in, in the last part of the 19th century that people who did not know us gathered together to begin to draw maps to carve out countries. I mean, at that time, who was representing Nigeria? Some, some company which had been given a license by the Queen. That's how... What year was that? 
I believe it, 18 something. I think he's not the queen. Yeah. <laughs> you are talking about the ancestors of the queen. Oh, yes, yes. There is <laughs> the monarchy. The 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 uh, you know why we talk about the queen? I think of her as. Uh, the the mother monarch. Because yeah, it was in a time that they actually allowed yeah, countries yeah, to be independent. Yeah, yes, you, you see, it's an institution. So when, we, when I talk about the queen, I talk about her as an institution. You know? So she gave a license to some company to come to Nigeria to ravage. And then they. They went to the Berlin conference like other people. Our forefathers, you mean? Yes, and started mm -hmm. sharing and all that. And you, this Nigeria of today goes back just to 1914. It's quite, it's quite a young. That was country. before the birth of the Queen Elizabeth II. Yes. No, I'm not blaming okay. the Queen. I'm <laughs> blaming. If I talk about the Queen now, it's the institution of point. the. Uh -huh. So Nigeria is just from 1914. We were amalgamated into one. But even then, the civil service was different. For the north, different civil service from the south, civil service. So it was just towards independence, and we started really coming together. What do you really expect? Is there is some valid blame for colonialism. We can do better. We can move beyond that. But it will take time. That's what I say to people. Different people coming together. And you, I see you spoke of Singapore there. Yeah, sure. Oh, Singapore split. Singapore split from Malaysia and one other country. And they became different countries. And that's a country of how many? 14, a population of about four. Uh, is it up to Lagos? No. I, I, I doubt whether Singapore is as big as yeah, Lagos. Yeah, true. Yeah, and then you have different, you have only three ethnic groups. I think the Chinese, the Malays, and the Indians. My God, here. Over 250 tribes. And that's the more reason why we have to do better. <laughs> so, you no, know, what I'm saying is that with 250 people, it's more difficult to match them together to mm. have the problems we are having now. Our children will look at us really like American pioneers. Mm. They would recognize that ah, these people had a lot of problems. So, our children will do better. But the problems we are having now, it, they are to be expected. This is a very big country, many, many tribes. I, I remember. When I was in university, one of the courses, the political science uh, lecturer that I was doing, as, uh, lecture, uh, course that I was doing as a lecturer, was an, he kept teaching us ethnicism. <laughs> that it was a major problem in Nigeria. Yeah. Mm, I've grown to find that that is true. It's one of the major problems. We will get over it, but we have a lot of history in front of us. Mm. Mm. We can We should blame colonialism. I know. I, everyone that blames colonialism has a point. We, can we improve? We can. But it will take time. But it's, it's taking too much time if you ask me. No, I don't think so. You, I don't know, think so. The truth of the matter is I, that think so. I think colonialism, whether it's negative or positive, there are still some positive aspects of it through Western civilization. Uh, well, Victor, will come to you. No you know doubt. That, you are this kind of person that likes telling people, come, you have to be responsible for your own, for your own mm. self. You know, you say this often. You have to be responsible. Who put you down? You know? Mm. Like, I want to hear your thoughts. I, 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 how long are we keep blaming, blaming? I mean, these guys, are, they are, that's the era that they've come and gone. What are we doing now to solve our problems? Yeah, they've just been, I mean, since the, you know, Her Majesty the Queen passed, there's just been a lot of people just talking about, you know, blaming lots of things. You know, they, they ruled us badly. We kind of lies. They took freedom away from us. They, you know, they did this and did that. And, and people were so insensitive. I mean, on Twitter, just... Just you know, bashing the queen and things like that, and and it's just the Irish, it's, the Irish were more insensitive. For me, it's just the Argentinians were more insensitive. For me, I, I, yeah, yeah very insensitive. <laughs> for me, I think it's just ludicrous, right? I mean, it's just it's just very. It's not. It's not. It's the lack of emotional intelligence to talk about oh, things right. like that at that particular time. Exactly. But however, I'm going to come from the angle, you know, in your script where you said that, you know, our national image. I mean, who who are the people that went to you know, Dubai to go and, you know, to fight, to just go take court activities into that place. And what happens is, you know, somebody who is just trying to, because again, when you think about the idea of Japa, you know, it's, it's, I mean, we should, we sh I should be able to want to go work in Singapore, do a pro, do a project for like six months and then come back. I should from there, you know, connect Dakar. From there, I should be able to go to, you know, um, Senegal, Accra. you know, and come back to, you know, Turkey and then go to the UK. I mean, why should people, why should going to another country be an issue? But again, when they search other people and the way they search Nigerians are different. 
because you guys, you have a history of, you know, just messing things up. And that's why people will say things like, oh, I'm going to give my child another passport or I'm going to have another passport so that when I'm going to another country, do you know there are some countries that when you think about economic strength, mm -hmm. when you think about, you know, that, that, um, that giant jatism, they don't ha they're not close to Nigeria, right? They're not close to Nigeria, but when you use those passports and apply to some countries, boom, it's visa and arrival. Mm -hmm. Like, they respect those countries. Mm -hmm. Well, because they are so, you mentioned Singapore, like, they are so little, there are some African countries that are so little, mm -hmm. but the respect that they have on the global space is massive. Mm -hmm. But Nigeria is so big, but our respect, you know, is so little. Right, they they don't respect us, so to speak. They fear us exactly. because of what we can it's more, do. It's, fear it's more of fear that I let you. you. So, I, so, I mean, I don't but, have it. but if you think about it, who are those causing those things? I would say people that you know. It's not again. We have internal issues, leadership problems, but individualistic problems exist. Who are those just littering everywhere? Who are those going to another country trying to swindle people? The president didn't ask you to do that. You did that of your own volition. So I just think that, you know, we want to... Okay, um, just like before that. we go to this, Suleiman, just one question for both of you. Mm -hmm. The poor imagery in, in, um, the poor imagery in uh, um, um, UAE, where this um, court clash went to go and disgrace themselves, not us. Yeah. Unfortunately, we have to see beer. Yeah. They do. Who caused it? Was it the leadership or the colonial masters? To not waste time is individualistic. Good. There's no now, Suleiman, what's your thought on this? Yeah, um, you see, in nation building, we must really find that niche of seeing it as it must be a bottom top approach, not top bottom approach. The reason is this just like uh, the other speaker said there, it's about individuals. Um, the bad attitude of individuals has really resulted in whereby one person is guilty of something denying an, um, another hundred people of enjoying the same thing they are supposed to get normally. So it's about uh, individuals. That's why we we'll have to look at a nation beauty to be a, a kind of a collective effort, right from the leader and the led, the civil servants and the artisans, even the have and the have not. And you can see, look at what's happened in Dubai recently, whereby Dubai used to be where you go, you get visa on arrival. Now it's even less if you are not so, so, so here, you can't get it. So a lot of guys that are doing wonderfully well, that are doing legit business, have been denied access to a lot of it because of the few bad ones. So where do we go from here? It's very simple. We just have to get back to the drawing board and get it right this time. That is, change has to begin with each and every one of us. That is from right from the house. You know, I remember there is something they used to call a social stratification there. We need to get it right from individuals, right to the house, right to the society, and it goes into the society at large. You see, the image of Nigeria as a whole has been battered. But at the same time, when you hear a lot of doom story from nowhere, we just hear a lot of the glooms. We just come. I remember we were busy talking of the bad image some people have created for us in Dubai. Then the, um, what was this lady's name that won the 100 meters uh, race? She just came up with doing well and celebrating the whole of good things about uh, Nigeria. It shows that each and every Nigerian, if we can go back to the drawing board, if I am good, the next neighbor is good, the next person is what is good, all this will culminate into something very big and the image of the nation will be better for, for it. Very much, Suleiman. Mm -hmm. So here's this thing: as we we Nigerians, let's focus on change. Begin with us individually. Mm -hmm. Colonialism or no colonialism, Nigeria at this point should be responsible for we Nigerians. Stephen will be talking about the death of the Queen, Nigerians' past and future. Stay with us. Mm -hmm.